YouTube. Morning, fellas. Ferocious mix out here. And I'm rolling, rolling, rolling. And I am in Arkansas. Poor state of the union. But it has some pretty uh, acreage. So it's early. It's only eight something in the morning. Let me come to you all while it's still early. And uh, one of the subscribers were wanted me to chime in with my two cents about the truckers that's been um, surrounding D.C. And uh, to me it was a non-issue. That's why I never brought it up. But I, I'm assuming the way you guys probably see things especially if you're on the outside of the industry looking in. You probably believe more of what the news is saying. And uh, I looked into it. I had an idea of what it was and what it was about before even looking into it. But I said, well, let me look into it so I can make sure that I'm correct in my assessment. Um, and what I gathered from doing a little research is that those guys are mostly uh, fleet owners. Okay? Um, they have multiple tr trucks. Most of them have their own authority. And the right is that the brokers, the freight brokers, because normally the way it works, excuse me, a manufacturer or a shipper will call a broker and say, hey, I have 10 loads of pallets that need to go out over the next two to three weeks and give them a, a tentative schedule and where the product needs to go. So let's say it wants to go from Chicago to Texas and the shipper in, Te and the shipper in uh, Chicago is saying, you got 10 loads going out. So they'll call a broker, a freight broker. And that broker would probably do some calculations to figure out, you know, what they should charge and what they should pass on to the driver. And the drivers were complaining that the brokers are basically pass, passing on too little, you know, they're keeping more of the money for themselves, but yet they're not doing the bulk and the lion's share of the work. The shipper calls them, they're just basically on the phone. They never leave the office. They don't have to deal with rain, sleet, snow, accidents, you know, uh, hot summers, the monsoon, uh, rains. And you gotta deal with no snow, no ice. Crazy folks on the highway texting and you know, putting lipstick on. They ain't got to deal with none of that. And they're taking, you know, too big of a portion. And the drivers are fed up with it. Okay? The drivers are literally fed up with it. And rightfully so. You know, how is it that you're just taking phone calls and you're getting the lion's share of the money. Well, that, in some case, not even the lion's share of the money, just the fact that you're getting more than what uh, the output of your labor is. You're just taking a phone call. You're entering information into the system, and you're getting, like the driver may get $2 a mile, but this broker, 
for that 20 minutes of work, 30 minutes of work, you know, they might be getting a thousand dollars. So yeah, I understand exactly what the drivers are upset about. But my thing is, yeah, you can go there and complain. And you can ask the government to regulate that industry. But I don't really see it happening to the degree that the drivers would like. I'm more of, I'm more in fact, I'm more in favor of, okay, there's nothing stopping those drivers from becoming freight brokers. And it is a conflict of interest. So, if, you, if you've been making money selling, I mean, making money uh, in trucking, you know, you could always set up another company or partner with a company. Or if you're married, let your wife her little education with freight brokering to set up a company under your wife's name. <clears throat> I don't know if that's that's uh, ethical or not, but these are the things I would be thinking. I'd be thinking more so of putting the freight brokers out of business. You know what I mean? Set your cousin up, your mom, if you can trust her, and maybe your brother, cousin.
or if it is freight coming out of there, it's only cheap freight. And so they won't take it. And they'll just bob tail home, not bob tail, but deadhead. They'll just deadhead home and wait at home until they're able to get a better load leaving out. So that might mean a day or two deadhead to go home, a day or two at home. Nah, that's too many days when my, my truck is not.
problem uh, signing to a bigger company. They got lawyers, they got insurance company, they got expert uh, negotiators when it comes to freight. Take it no matter what it pays. 
try to, you know, do something so they can feel whole. And in this case, you got plenty of drivers going and petitioning the government to regulate that industry. So I'm, I'm sure they didn't see that coming. So if the government decides to step in and regulate that industry, they're not going to like that at all.
we all making money. We happy. <laughs> so you go up to a guy and ask him a question on how to make more money. Most guys are willing to share that information with you. And they ain't got to know your name. They ain't got to ever seen you before. I've had a lot of guys walk up to me and approach me and ask me questions. And I, I'm really forthcoming. They be like, man, how much you making? Yeah, man. You don't mind me asking. I tell them. And if 
we don't, if we reject the freight, guess what? The next biggest carrier, chances are, they got a lot of overhead too. They're gonna reject the freight. And then they're gonna go down to the, 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 the smaller outfits. And if it ain't enough money for them, they're gonna reject the freight. Then they're gonna get to the point where they're dealing with really small outfits that that may run the risk of doing something foolish, okay? They may bite off too much, right? Not be able to get the freight their own time. Um, they may have accidents, they may have rollovers, they may have spills, uh, they may have a bad CSA score, they, they may be taking a hit on the insurance. Uh, the trucks may break down a lot. I mean, it's all kind of stuff going on. And so, a lot of times, companies are not willing to jeopardize when they got a really good, uh, when they got a really good uh, uh, shipper, I mean, a really good company that they use to ship their products that they don't have these problems, okay? So you're saying, a guy like me, keep my truck in good condition, always on time, majority of the time with my loads, no spills ever, no accidents ever, uh, never had a problem with insurance, um, top CSA score, You'll give that up huh, for a question mark of a company <laughs> because you're trying to save a few dollars. So really, you, it's like the, it's like the what they call it. You're penny rich but dollar poor. Okay, that's the that's the analogy. You can be penny rich and a dollar poor. So while you're trying to pinch pennies, you're gonna basically end up costing yourself dollars. have experienced that and they realize that it don't work so once they get a good carrier like us we pretty much hold those contracts indefinitely they automatically renew pretty much and most of the time when they renew we get to up the price so every year or every two years whenever that contract comes due we get a chance to up that price and that that amount is passed on to the driver so I get automatic pay increases without even knowing it. Because I drive off a percentage. So when we get a pay increase from a certain carrier, they don't even send out a notice to us to let us know that. You just see a spike in your in your uh, settlement. I love it. And we got literally hundreds of companies that we carry for. So can you imagine? It's like, I may get a pay raise every week or every other week without even knowing it. I just look at the settlement and be like, man, I, I thought I used to make this amount for this load. Man, they must have got a raise. It'd be like an extra hundred, hundred and fifty dollars on that. I'm like, Shh. you know what I mean? Enough said. Give me a new watch or something. Okay, go have me a good sit down vegan deal. Whatever, well, you can't sit down no more, but. So to me, it's a lot of advantages, man, being leased to a big company, especially if you know how to move to the top. And move to the top without kissing ass, okay? You move to the top based off of performance, okay? You don't have to kiss ass when you're a top producer, you don't. have top producers that, that, that kiss ass. Hey, that's on them. I'm just not built like that. I'm more the type to kick ass than kiss it. So that's my thoughts, guys, on the DC situation. I'm sure some stuff in there you guys can take from. And some of you guys may disagree, but, you know, it's all good. We all got our own 
way of doing things, but like I say, it's going to come down to whatever lifestyle you lead is going to determine how you feel about these issues. Okay, due to the fact that I'm MGTOW, and due to the fact that I'm red pill, and due to the fact that I'm a masculine man, and I don't take women's crap, I love being by myself. I love listening, listening to my own thoughts. I love studying. I love educating myself. I love seeing the country. Okay. I can cook for myself. I can clean for myself. I can pay my own bills. I love being unattached. I love being able to walk in people's lives and they not uh, adding value to my life. I love walking out. So in my case, I could be out here getting money nonstop. You know, I could be out here. So because of that, I'm going to be an asset to whatever company I go to. The manager and the dispatcher are going to literally love me. Making money is not an issue for me. I don't have to be home for no birthdays. I ain't got to be home for no anniversaries. I ain't got to be home because she not feeling well. I ain't got to be trying to pay the bills for somebody else. I ain't got to be worried about somebody crying. Cause I'm not spending time with them. None of that. So I can literally be out here 100% of the time. And I have been doing it for the last four and a half years. And I love it. Every year I'm loving it more and more. I've been like this for four and a half years, guys. So of course I'm going to be a top producer. I can go to my manager and tell them, hey, look, getting ready to go on vacation and I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy myself so I'm gonna ball out of control so for the next I always plan it out for, for the next two months I want to keep my wheels moving non-stop and guess what they normally tell me no problem because not only do I make the money that I want I make them look good I make our terminal look good and it's a win for the company overall I wanted to get my APU. It's roughly $10,000 for an uh, auxiliary power unit. It's to run your heat and to run your AC and to recharge your, your battery when you're sitting and you got all type, type of electronics plugged up. It costs $10,000. Told my manager, hey, I want to get that, and I want to pay cash, and I don't want to feel like I'm going to be broke when I do it. So they kept me out. I made, they kept asking me, oh, you got enough money yet? I'm like, nope. I ended up having the money four times before I told them, okay, bring me home for a couple weekends. I had 40000 before I looked up. <laughs> And all I needed was 10. And I paid cash for it. Okay? So it just depends on your lifestyle, man, when it comes to trucking. You got a wife and she needs you home every weekend, you're not going to make as much. She needs you home for holidays, you're not going to make as much. If you got to pay for your bills and her bills, yeah, you're not going to see as much money. You gotta take a vacation for two and pay for two, you know, you're not gonna see so much money. So it just depends on your lifestyle and, and if you have, if you're an attack, if you're attached or you're unattached. Okay. What kind of mindset you have. See, I have a real strong mind and I can be out here and conquer this work, this road. I'm not afraid of it. You know what I mean? I'm out here and I conquer it. Four and a half 
five years, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I've been to what? At least 38 states.
women start a channel, they ain't got it. They don't be talking about nothing. They don't have nothing interesting to, to provide. They not adding value. They're not trying to, literally, they're not trying to help people. They on there literally talking garbage. And they're supported like you wouldn't believe. It takes them literally two months, three months to get to a thousand subscribers. Which means they'll be monetized, they'll put in for the AdSense, they'll get approved, they'll be making money from the ads. Y'all know MGTOW content is not gonna be approved for no freaking ads. Y'all know that. And once you, and, and what I notice is once guys start getting big and they realize that people are really listening to you and you're providing real gain, real value to people's lives that they can take and do something with, improve their, their existence, they start seeing more money and making better decisions. Channels like that start getting shadow banned. Then you start getting strikes. Then all of a sudden your channel start just get disappeared. Y'all know the routine. I've been watching YouTube long enough to see how guys get treated when they're in the MGTOW space. And yet I still choose to come out here and tell y'all the truth. I know eventually they're going to take the channel down. That's why I'm actively trying to get other avenues set up. So when they do take it down, you guys can come over there. But you gotta support your interests. I support guys. You know what I mean? I don't necessarily buy the products because I don't like some of their designs or whatever, because I'm a design guy, so you know you gotta you gotta impress me with your design if, if you want me to buy it. But I just donate the money to them. Forget it, here you go. Don't think nothing of it. Because I know these guys put in the work. I put in the work and this ain't easy. I'm just coming right off the dome. I ain't writing nothing down. Ain't nothing scripted. I don't take no notes. None of that. Just coming straight off the dome. Every video is straight off the dome. I ain't got to write nothing down. I'm giving y'all purely life experience and just uh, things that I've noticed. Once you've been on, a, been on this planet long enough, okay, 30, uh, I mean, uh, 54 uh, revolutions on this planet, you start to see certain patterns. And I'm just pointing out the patterns to you guys. Some of y'all may see it, some of you may don't. Some of you uh, don't see it. Taking upon myself to point it out to you guys so we can have a, a, a video catalog to help younger me because nobody helped me. Everything I had to get, I had to get on my own. Now my son was privileged because I made sure he had everything he needed and I put the, the foot to his ass. So he's humble. But he got everything he wanted, and everything I asked of him, he met or exceeded it. He ain't wanted the little spoiled brats. I ain't have no problem getting in his ass. That's why we have such a loving relationship now, because I never sugarcoated anything. I gave him the truth. Now do with it whatever you want to do, but you can't say nobody told you. You can't say you wasn't made aware of it. And I even tell him that to his face now. Every time we get together, I tell him, you can't say your dad ain't tell you. He be like, yeah, dad, you're right. That's my job. This ain't easy, guys. Just want y'all to know that. But I'm gonna continue doing it because I like it. And really, you guys really are the only ones I talk to. To be honest with you, don't nobody else understand me. Now my son understands me because he's he's seen, you know, he's been there through the whole flick, so he understands what's happening. But 
Nobody else understands me. And I don't even try to get them to, to try. I just keep it moving because I realize time is going to uh, determine who's correct. life 
helping you make decisions so you don't make idiotic, stupid mistakes. Missteps, I'm trying to say. But believe me, all my moves at this point is calculated. I'm not trying to make no missteps. But support your interest, guys. That's pretty much what all this was about. This last four or five minutes. Support your interest. You're getting real red pill truth. I'm sure you all can, can tell that's what exactly what you're getting. I'm not putting no fluff in there. Y'all, y'all know the truth when you hear. So support your interest. Alright, but I'm gonna get off. Love you guys. Remember, be good stewards of your health because nobody's gonna look after us but us. Hold the line. Big towel for life, men first. Support your interest, buy a mask. When I come out with these shirts and hats, I want everybody to buy a shirt and a hat. So we can get this good quality equipment and give you guys the best content. I want to start doing interviews with other men. Okay? I can set up interviews. I know guys, are, you put a camera in a guy's face <laughs> and ask some serious questions. Believe me, you'll get cooperation. I already know this. But I gotta have the right equipment so guys will give us the truth. When they see that you spend some money on the equipment, they're gonna look at you as a uh, quasi-professional and they're gonna answer your questions truthfully. And when guys get off the subject, I'm gonna be able to bring them back and make them spit that truth. all for to help us all grow and help us all prosper so you don't just get it from me I want y'all to get it from a bunch of other cats you know some of these lifers in the business been in the business 40 years bought houses, cars vacation homes okay, multiple trucks okay we live the real uh, exquisite lifestyle I want y'all to hear from them out of their mouth so you don't just get it all from me some guys are so cynical, they think, oh, you're just making it sound like that. I'm like, okay, you're right. So that, that's basically a way for you not to do no research on your damn own. You just to discount whatever another man is saying. And that means that you done bought into the feminist uh, Kool-Aid. And when a man is telling you something, you want to be cynical. You're a fool. That's what you are. Not only are you a fool, you a damn fool. man could be telling you something to benefit your whole freaking existence and you being cynical like a female. But it is what it is. I see it all the time. But let me get off. Love you guys. Um, support your interests. If I see anything interesting on the way uh, where I'm going, I'm in uh, Arkansas and I'm headed to uh, Baton Rouge. So I'll be there today. Just coming into Little Rock right now, Arkansas. I'm not, I'm not far away. I am. Uh, well, I'm not. I didn't come the main route when you can see the city. If I had came the main route, I would.